This module, we're going to look at budgetary planning of cash receipts and cash disbursements. Now, this is called the cash budget. And it's very, very important for all organizations to make sure they have the cash on hand to pay their bills as they come due. Otherwise, they're insolvent and bankruptcy. Now, the cash budget shows the anticipated cash flows for the operating budget is often considered the most important output in preparing the financial budget. Now, there are only three main sections. Cash coming in, cash going out, and if I'm short, I need financing, so I have to have the cooperation of my friendly bank manager. And it shows the beginning and ending of the cash balance in every quarter. So basically, it's laid out this way. Beginning cash balance, we add cash receipts, gives us the total cash available. We subtract cash disbursements, and we determine if we have any available cash or we have a deficiency of cash. Then we borrow to come up to an ending cash balance. Now the cash receipts section shows the expected cash inflow from sales revenue. We also have cash inflow if we have uh, bonds or shares, we get interest or dividends. We take that into consideration. Cash disbursements basically is for direct material, direct labor, and taxes, dividends, and the purchase of any out assets. These are cash outflows. And the financing section shows when I need to borrow and when I need to repay. So the cash budget, though, unlike the operating budget that we went across the four quarters, the cash budget is prepared in sequence. That is, we must do quarter one completely because the ending cash balance in quarter one is the beginning cash balance in quarter two. And then we do quarter two and the ending cash in quarter two is the beginning cash in quarter three. Okay, so it's often prepared for the whole year. So for an example, we're talking about Hayes Company again. They're starting off with 38,000 cash at the beginning of the year. Now again, here's management's policy. Management says we do not want to risk going below 15,000. So anytime you're below 15,000 at the end of any quarter, you must borrow to bring it up to 11,000. Now, where do we get our cash coming in? Well, from sales. And Sales are cash sales, but then we also have credit sales. So from experience, management knows in this case that 60% of sales are collected in the quarter in which the sales occurred. 40% are collected in the following quarter. Now we're starting the year off with accounts receivable from the year before of 60,000. And that is expected to be collected in full. There's also going to be a short term and uh, investments will be cashed in for 2000. So we then look at the cash flow, the direct material, cash outflow, the direct materials. Now the direct materials are paid in a quarter purchase, 50% in the quarter purchase and 50% in the next quarter. The quarter accounts payable at the beginning of this year is 10,006 and that's expected to be paid. Direct labor is paid in the quarter in which they worked. Manufacturing overhead and selling in men are items that are paid in that quarter, but in each one of those budgets, we have depreciation. And depreciation is a non-cash expense. So we must separate or uh, break that out. And we plan to purchase a truck in the second quarter for 10,000 cash. We make e equal quarterly payments uh, of income taxes and loans that I borrow from the bank are repaid in the earliest quarter when there's sufficient cash, that is more than 15,000. So therefore, the first thing we have to do is look at the timing of the cash coming in, the accounts receivable. It's stated that we're beginning the year off with 60,000 in accounts receivable. Now, first quarter sales from the sales budget is 180,000. I collect 60,000, 60%, 60 I'm sorry, of that 180,000 or 108,000 
in quarter one. So the total amount coming in in quarter one is 168. In quarter two, I collect the other 40% of the first quarter's sales. And I collect 60% of the second quarter sales. And so therefore, my total cash in in, in quarter two is 198,000. I'll do the same thing quarter three, quarter four, and there I have the timing of my cash in related to accounts receivable. Now I do the same with the cash disbursements related to accounts payable. I have accounts payable of 10,000. Now, it says that um, my direct material budget paid purchases in the first quarter was 25,200. I pay half in the first quarter and half in the second quarter. So in the first quarter, total payments 23,2. In the second quarter, I collect the other half of the first quarter and half of the second quarter. In the third quarter, I get half of the second quarter and half of the third and so on. And there's my cash out for cash purchases of direct material. So I start off. Here I have, and I do sequentially again, quarter one, opening balance, 38,000. In comes collection from customers, 168. Sale of securities, 2,000. So I have total receipts of 170. And plus the 38 I have on hand, I have 208,000. Now, for my direct material purchases, I need 23.2 in quarter one. The direct labor budget says my direct labor is 62,000. Now, my manufacturing overhead budget is 57,100, but I have 3,800 in depreciation, so I don't pay that. So what I pay is 53,300. Same with selling in men. I don't pay the depreciation on that. I pay 41,000. Income tax expense, you said 3000 each quarter. So I need 182000 I have 208 I have 25 at the end of quarter one. I do not have to borrow. I don't repay. I start quarter two off with 25 dollars In comes 198 I have a total of 223 Out goes 27200 And so on. Back out the depreciation again in quarter two for the manufacturing overhead and depreciation for the selling and men. I'm going to purchase a truck for the second quarter. I pay uh, taxes. I, my disbursements are 211. I have 223. So my balance is 12,000, which means I'm below the 15,000. So I borrow 3,000 to bring it up to 15. I start quarter three with the 15,000. In comes 228, out goes 220. I have 22,500. And I pay back the 3,000 plus 100 in interest. And I have an ending balance of 19,4. I start off the fourth quarter with 19,4. And I continue. And that's how I produce the cash budget sequentially. Cash coming in, cash going out, and 